Yaddish guy. Go Alice. Go Centaur. Star ladders, go. When you're sitting in the capsule on top of a rocket Four, and the three, final moments of two, the countdown are happening, one. it's exciting. It's like being on the top of that roller coaster when you're a little bit scared, but you're really pumped because this is what you've been working for all your life, taking that next step into exploration. A human exploration in space is really important. It's, the, it's reaching out to new frontiers, looking at new places. And the rest of the dogs are good. We should record the MLP. That feeling during the countdown is, is pretty indescribable. You're looking so forward to getting into space, uh, but there's so much that leads up to this, so much effort from so many thousands of people on the ground that get you to that point. The Commercial Crew Program is a partnership between NASA and industry to build rockets and spacecraft to launch NASA astronauts and our international partners to the International Space Station. In previous programs like the shuttle, NASA was responsible for the design, the development, and the operation of the system. And in this case of commercial crew, uh, the industry partners are responsible for that design, development, and operation of the system. ULA's role in that is we've teamed with the Boeing company to provide a launch service for the CST-100 Starliner capsule. The Atlas V Starliner mission will be launched on an Atlas 400 series without a payload fairing, so a 422 vehicle. will launch from uh, Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral with two solid rocket boosters and a dual engine. In Centaur. So Centaur is the upper stage that we use on our uh, Atlas V launch vehicle. Certain missions require dual engine Centaurs just because we need the extra performance to get certain payloads into orbit. I mean, in the case of commercial crew, our top priority is crew safety. So we design a mission such that uh, we take a little bit of a depressed trajectory um, and that allows the crew to have the maximum opportunity to um, abort the mission and to return to Earth uh, in the most safe manner if necessary. And we kind of make up on the back end of the mission uh, with the extra performance that we get to Centaur to bring the crew capsule to uh, orbit and eventually to the International Space Station. So we've made a lot of progress in the last few years. We've actually constructed a crew access tower at Cape Canaveral, Florida. The primary structure was erected last year and was completed in December of 2015. We are now working on the internal outfitting of that structure to add um, elevators, commodities lines, electrical, everything that we need um, to make the tower operational. In a human spaceflight mission, mission safety is, is paramount to all. We make it a point to bring the astronauts around. They've visited the factory in Decatur, they've participated here in Denver in some of our design reviews, and we get to know the, the astronauts themselves and, and learn about their families and, and their background. And that's really the motivation, is they're putting their lives in our hands to, to get them to space. We have to demonstrate to NASA that our vehicle is safe enough to fly humans. What that really means at the end of the day is that we have to show through our processes, through our design, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. This is why it's safe for us to fly astronauts on Atlas V. It's really expanding mission success to incorporate mission safety. Now the Starliner mission is a little bit different uh, than our standard missions right now. Uh, we are going to be flying a very heavy payload. We designed a new launch vehicle adapter to carry the heavy payload. Things have evolved so much since the initial Atlas rockets that put uh, John Glenn in space, and the spacecraft is completely different than we're putting up here. We have gone through a very detailed look at every possible hazard that we could have on the launch vehicle adapter, and, have, and actually in the entire launch vehicle, and have written very detailed hazard analysis reports for that, documenting every the hazards and how we mitigate those hazards. Uh, we have added an emergency detection system. The emergency detection system is a system to autonomously detect catastrophic launch vehicle failures. It specifically is targeted at those failure modes that are too fast for an operator or the crew to uh, perceive of by themselves. And so the EDS system will catch those fast developing failures and autonomously get the CST-100 away before anyone, an operator or the crew, is able to react. One of the things that's really exciting about the space program is to kind of see the evolution of each of the each of the vehicles. You kind of, that can be a short process or it can be a really long process. In this case with the Atlas, it has a long history. It has a long history of success. It has a long history that even includes human spaceflight. What I've noticed in leading a team that is preparing to launch humans is that there is a passion that uh, is, is brought forward 
for the human space flight that, uh, that changes the dynamic a little bit. Launch day is gonna be exciting. Um, I think by the time we get to launch day, we'll be through all of our structural testing, so we'll know we have a good structure. I think we'll have a lot of uh, other test data in our pockets, so we'll know that we gonna fly successfully, but still, there's a thrill of launch day. I'm looking forward to it. I, I really can't wait to see this thing fly. I think that what we're doing here at ULA and what we're doing on the Commercial Crew Program will be in the history book someday. And that makes me really proud, not just for myself, but for the entire team of people that are working on this program. I think we're making the future. Um, I, this is the very beginning of commercial human space flight. I mean, we are at the forefront of this right now. I think it's really exciting that we get to say that we're going to bring astronauts back to launch from U.S. soil again. We have the most reliable launch vehicle in the world. And where else would you put your precious cargo, the, our U.S. astronauts, as well as our partners?